This is Laborte, and it is so nice to have you here. These are the paints you need. First, we use dark sea blue for all the black parts and as the base of our NMM on the shovel. This is about two parts paint, one part thinner. You can cover most of the clothes as well, we don't really need this color on the skin, but it's no big deal if you spray some over it. For the skirt, I use Nagarot Knight. This is a very dark purple and you don't need maximum opacity around the sides. If you spray some dark purple over the nearby parts, that's no biggie because cold and dark colors always work for shadows. For the head and upper part of the cape, I use Rhinox Hide. I also spray some on the bag, uh, full of heads on the back, and using this color on the upper half of the miniature to introduce some tonal variation. I'm adding some Balor Brown to the Rhinox hind and start building up the OSL effect. OSL stands for Object Source Lightning, which in this case the candles are the objects of our light source. The same like in uh, Granny's room. We need to bring some warmth to imitate the candlelight and we start with the coldest parts by adding some yellowish tones. Try to cover the upper half of the torso and back with these colors, leaving a little bit of shadow vertically running down behind her feathers. After that I do the same thing with a brush to pick out some of the major details close to the head using thin layers. It is very important to use thin layers after using an airbrush, otherwise the parts will be very visible where you use the brush or an airbrush. Try to leave some dark recesses around the belt buckles as a black line so we don't lose the details on the head. With all my brush strokes I follow the same direction towards the head. Highlight the severed heads as well, focusing on their forehead, nose and cheeks. Cover the face with Pornfang Brown, which is a bit warmer brown. This color will help me to create the foundation of the face by trying to find the edges of the jaw. Now I'm using pure Balor Brown and start to reduce the highlight areas of the OSL. The biggest and brightest part of the OSL will be the head, so try to reduce the highlights towards it. She's looking in the same direction where he points the head in her hand, and the head has a lower cut. Uh, on the front, so I'm guessing the light from the candle should uh, shoot further where she looks. So I highlight uh, her right knuckle, but vertically I would only go down with the highlights around her chest area. I continue the process with Zamesi Desert. I try to follow the lines of the wax uh, that drips down on the candle to have some texture for them. Also apply this color over the flames and edges of the hat. On the cape, reduce the highlight areas towards the head as we did before, creating a more and more intense OSL effect. To push the values, I add some ice yellow to the Zamesi Desert. Now I'm only focusing on the candles and the hat and a little bit on the hair. The hair of the Necromancer is quite bright grey, but the hat casts a shadow over it, so try to leave a bit of a darker area close to that. Now with pure ice yellow, I paint the top of the candles focusing around the flames and the top edges of the cylinder shape and the top part of the belt buckle. I also add some of this color to the hair, reducing the highlight areas. After that, I thought the candlelight was a bit too cold, so I glazed some area yellow on the mid-tones and even over the highlights on the cape. 
This is a very thin glaze consistency and try to watch out that the paint doesn't flow into the recesses or I will slap on your tiny hand. This will increase the temperature of our light and uh, creates an overall warm feel to it. Then I create small white spots inside the flames. This will indicate the brightest and hottest point of our fire. After that I highlight the face using Morphe Brown and KDM Flash Tone, focusing on the cheeks, chin and upper part of the mouth. Uh, the face in my case it's really not smooth and uh, not nice like uh, Granny's butt cheek. It's kind of a poor uh, sculpt, but that's the luck of the draw I guess. Uh, try to leave the area and the eyes darker so it will look like uh, the head is casting a shadow over the face, which it uh, does anyway, so we can emphasize on that fact. After that I painted the eyes with ice yellow. Uh, no iris this time because it looks like uh, she is conjuring some sort of spell uh, and I think that's uh, cool. Uh, sorry I have no footage, but the head and hair makes extremely hard to record that. Then I went back to the skirt using Jean Stiller purple, but I would highly advise you use Demonite Hide or something more greyish purple. It was just too saturated and doesn't fit well and later I'm going to highlight the skirt with Demonite Hide because I didn't like the Arazoid. Only focus on the top folds around the waist to have a more darker skirt. Here I painted back some of the shadows with Nagarot Knight, but I soon realized it's not dark enough and I overhighlighted the folds. So I went back with black and glazed some on the sides and on the lower part of the skirt and between the folds to tone it back a little bit because I don't have any darker colors than uh, Nagarot Knight other than black. I tried to reduce the highlight areas even more on the face with KDM Flash, uh, making it a bit more pale and to emphasize the jawline. Also, I gave her a little bit of makeup on lips uh, with the uh, Rhinox hide. And then I glazed a little bit of yellow over the highlights to imitate that the light bounces of the cape to her face in a subtle way. Then I started to work on the cape and other grey parts. I'm creating a bigger highlight over the lower end of the shawl and on the top part on the, on the rings that uh, follows the grip of the shawl. I highlight the lower parts of the cape using the highlight reference photo included in the Patreon post. I'm leaving most of the surface black so the cape will read as black. I also highlight small sections on the boots that are facing up next to the shoelaces. Continue the process with Dunstone. I'm not applying this color to the cape, only on the shovel and belt buckle and a tiny bit on the boots. With using less and less contrast on the cape, we can communicate that the fabric is not reflecting the light as much because it's a soft diffused surface. But the shovel, which is metal, uh, does reflect light more as well as the belt buckles. On the shovel I also reduce the consistency of the paint to a heavier glaze to blend in with the previous layer. After that I used Administratum Grey to push the contrast, reducing the highlight areas more on the shower and belt buckles, uh, creating small lines along the lower side of the cracks uh, and adding new highlights uh, to the edge of the shower and breaking them up into separate sections. Adding a shower to a necromancer character is so cool and convenient because she uses that to dig up graves to get corpses and using her uh, head with candles to light a way in a dark graveyard 
uh, creates such a cool and uh, practical atmosphere to this uh, miniature. Lots of characters have this low-key uh, anime vibe to them, which is uh, pretty cool, especially the necromancers in the game. Then I cover the grip of the shower and the ropes on the belt with Rhinox hide. After that I highlighted them by mixing a bit of Bainbeard Brown to the Rhinox hide. I highlight all the rope leaving just a tiny bit of Rhinox hide between the ropes uh, groups as a black line. I continue the process with Bainblade Brown, focusing on the upper half and using small lines to emphasize the grooves on the rows. Now I mix a bit of ice yellow to the Bainblade Brown and continue the process focusing on the smaller section of the upper part on the ropes while reducing the highlight areas but keeping some of the previous layers. I wasn't happy with the head that she is holding in her hand so I went back with the same colors that I used for the OSL and uh, highlighted the parts that could be impacted by the light source. The truth is these parts wouldn't uh, be reflecting the light so much uh, since they are uh, with the same level with the cape. It would reflect it more if this is a slimy head, but uh, it's not. But overall it doesn't really matter because Papa Laborts wants to bring some attention to this sword head, uh, so I highlighted it anyway. The main thing is to make the OSL effect consistent, that we should highlight it towards the light source. So the top part of the forehead and ear, cheeks, should be the brightest parts and the lower part of the head uh, should be darker, but it's exactly the same process like we did on the head and the cape. Papa Labors even went a bit too bright, uh, so I muted back the highlight with a few layers of Balor Brown glaze. Then I painted the eyes of the corpse with ice yellow, like the necromancer, and this uh, made, uh, made this head have some uh, connection between the two because of a spell or something, like she is looking through the eyes of the dead, something like that. See, it's quite interesting that this uh, mini creates a story for itself. I wanted to make the cape a little bit dirty, so I used one part paint and one part uh, matte medium and a crappy brush to create some stains on the lower parts of the capes and a little bit on the boots. I mean, if she digs up dead bodies, I'm pretty sure her uh, clothes uh, could get a little muddy while she's digging in a graveyard uh, while it rains, because it, uh, it, it rains, of course, while you dig up bodies in a graveyard. The matte medium is going to create a very mud dirt look, which is similar to dried up mud on a fabric like the cape. Then I went back and muted uh, back the highlights on the cape with demonet hide, uh, as I mentioned before. Lastly, I used an airbrush and a brush to create some splatter blood effect on the shower to add a little bit of extra detail. Just wet your brush and dip it in the paint and aim with your airbrush over the surface uh, you want to splatter. If you don't have an airbrush, just use a more firm brush and pull back the bristles with your finger and let it whiplash back on the surface to create a similar effect. With that, our necromancer is done. If you want to see how I painted the base, check out the how to paint stone tile bases tutorial on my channel. You can find the link to that in the video description. So thank you for joining me on this little painting adventure. A huge thanks to my Patreons who support these kind of videos. With special shout out to Jonathan Rhodes, Cold Blooded Dom, Trying to Paint Minis, Jonathan Mosner, Ruzak, Vlad D, Urtepel21, One Sharp Joe Crafts, Richard Piat, Glitchy Macrash. If you want to support the work of Papa Labors, you can do that on Patreon, where you will have early access to these videos and you can vote on the next mini with some exclusive Patreon content. Or if you need a little bit of extra help, online coaching is also available. Now, I hope the rest of your day will be as smooth as a granny's butt cheek. <laughs>